We're just about ready to start. Is everyone ready? Yes. yes. Okay, here we go. Five, four, action. So many tools that we've learned about that help us predict and forecast the weather. Now here's our me meteorologist Gloria Cruz with the weather forecast for today and the upcoming week. Tomorrow morning the low will be 53 degrees Fahrenheit and the afternoon high will be 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now here's weather and temperature for the remainder of the week. That's it for this week's weather. Now, here's reporter Tell Easter outside our studio with a report on severe weather season. Severe weather season is here. Some safety tips to protect you and your family included. Have a plan where to go where if the weather is going to be bad. Listen to the radio or TV and to know where the storms are headed. Have a weather safety kit with flashlight and batteries in case the power goes out. I'm Deli Easter reporting for WCES TV. Now back to the studio. That was a great report. Thank you, Deli Easter. Yes, we do to make sure we're prepared for severe weather. Now we have another report on weather tools that many of us use around our homes. WCS reporters Kelly Pancho and Emily Brindle of our next story on this well-known weather tool. Everyone needs one of these in their homes and in their cars. A thermometer. Temperature can change quickly. As you know, a thermometer is an instrument used to measure temperature. Thermometers can measure inside and outside temperature, and most of them do this by direct contact with the air. At modern weather stations, like the one we saw last week at the Science Center, an electronic temperature sensor is used to measure the outside air temperature. Our thermometer here uses mercury. Now, as you could see, a good weather tool to have. Now, as you can see, a good weather tool to have around your home is a thermometer. I wonder what the temperature is in here. 74 degrees. The volume of the liquid expands as it heats up, representing an increase in temperature. And the liquid contracts when it cools down, representing a degrees in temperature. I'm Emily Brindle. And I'm Kimberly Pacheco, recording for WCES TV. You know, I don't think we have a thermometer at our houses. It sure would help me to know whether I can wear shorts to school every day. Hmm. Trip, do you have a weather van or a windsock at your house? No, but I wish I did, especially now that I know what one is. We have a report on weather vanes. Let's go to our reporters, Chris Chilton and Madison Nelson. I hear they are experts on weather vanes. I don't know about being an expert, but our second grade class has certainly learned a lot about this weather tool. Yes, we have. This is a windsock, and, and it is used to tell which direction the wind is blowing. We made this simple weather tool and took it outside to test. We held it by the string and checked which way the wind was blowing. On the day we tested, the wind was blowing from the south. That's right, we saw a real weather vane on our visit to the science center at Meadowview Middle School. It was pretty cool, I'm Chris Chilton. And I'm Madison Nelson, reporting for WCES TV. Lots of people have, been, have wind sucks hanging on their porches to see the wind blow. Some of them can be really fancy. Yes, I can see the wind suck or weather vane is an important tool for many people. And that's our next tool, the anemometer. Here's Warren Criswell and Sean Roberts with that report. 
Wasn't it a moment you may be wondering? And did you know that many people confuse the Windsock or Wesley thing with the Animal Habitat? Yes, they do, but we know they have totally different jobs. And this is a moment of talking about that's the wind's blowing. One cup is a different color, so we can tell when it has made one complete revolution. The number of turns in a minute tell how fast the wind is blowing. This is a useful tool for lots of people, including pilots when they fly or farmers when they want to spray their food. It sure is. Farmers don't want you spraying chemicals on a really windy day into their neighbor's house. You got that right. I'm one principal. And I'm Sean Roberts, reporting for WCES-TV at Kirkland Elementary School. I didn't know what a weather van or an anemometer were until we learned about it in school. I wanted to look around when I'm in the car with my family and see if I see any of those anemometers. Let me know if you found one near our school. I'll have to show my family too. Okay, we have one more tool left, and that's the rain gauge. This one is my favorite tool. My teacher said that in her, in she has one in her yard. She checks it after it rains to see how much rain has fallen. I bet the rain gauge overflowed a few weeks ago. We had, we had a bunch of rain in just a few hours. It just means we will have some nice green grass when spring gets here in a couple of weeks. Oh, spring? Well, I guess we'll just check in with their A and A team. Angel, Toby and Angel wants to see what they know about this rain, about rain gauges. What is this year for, you might ask? Another question you might ask is why is it important? This is a ring and solution book attached to a pool in your backyard. When it rains, it fills up with rain water and then should be able to tell how much it has rained. Is it important for her to know the amount of rainfall so she can determine if pulling weeds might be a good Saturday afternoon chore? All for her husband to know if he can plow the garden without getting stuck in the door. I'm Mindy Tapia, and I'm Angel Austin preparing for WCES TV at Kirkland Elementary School. That's it for our weather report on the tools we have made and learned about. Thanks for turning into WCES TV. I'm Kylie Booker, and I'm Rick Willing. Goodbye for now.